16, 2022, a powerful wave of protests swept across Iran against the harsh religious laws of the clergy. The reason was the death of 22-year-old Iranian Mahsa Amini, who was detained by the wise quiet for wearing hijab incorrectly. The media dubbed the riots the biggest since the Green Revolution. The protesters shouted, "Death to the dictator, and Khamenei will be overthrown, while women burned their headscarves in response to the police attack and chanted the slogan, Shameless Islamic State. Rails were held in solidarity with protesters in different cities of the world, such as London, Brussels and New York. And in Kabul, about 25 women protesters approached the building of the Iranian embassy. In their hands, they carried banners with the inscriptions Iran has risen, now it's our turn, and from Kabul to Iran say no to dictatorship. However, the rally was interrupted by gunshots from the Taliban. Orientalist political scientist Nikolai Kozhanov stated that protests in Iran always had a female face. Women in Iran have traditionally played a much more respected and visible role for centuries than in the same neighboring Arab states. And in terms of their influence on the family, on the husbands, and in terms of their everyday independence, they always had great rights and opportunities. But after the Islamic Revolution, harsh legislation was introduced in the country which consolidated the patriarchal nature of society, which severely limited the rights of women. And as a result, we see in Iran on the one hand quite active women and girls who are noticeable in science, in sports and even in politics, on the other hand, a complete discrepancy between the actual situation and the legal one. In this video, we will consider the difficult past of Iranian women on the path to independence from patriarchal oppression and radical laws of the clergy. Before the advance of the Qatar dynasty, Iranian women played a decorative role. In the Safavid era 1502 to 1736, they were very often depicted in the court environment where they spent time in the female half. Often artists portrayed them as eavesdropping on men's conversations. Everything changed in the 19th century when women began to take public activity and demands from the state the creation of educational institutions for girls of non-noble origin. The initiative was rebuffed by the Islamic clergy until in 1865 the initiative of Safi Yezdi, the wife of Sheikh Mahamiya Yezdi, the first school for girls was opened. Safiye personally trained 66 women who became teachers at the school and herself and she herself spreads the ideas of women's equality in lectures. At the beginning of the 20th century, the first female writers began to appear among women, and in 1907, the first women's magazine Danish saw the light of day. Today, women in Iran are still forced to cover their heads if other men are nearby, as well as to cover their bodies up to their hands and feet. However, many girls neglect these rules and wear tight clothes, letting their hair out from under the headscarf. The BBC and many other Western media are banned from working inside Iran. Information about what is happening in the country comes mainly through social networks, but it's still difficult for journalists to verify it through independent channels. All this is reminiscent of the Arab Spring when social networks gave people the opportunity to communicate, organize, share information, resist state propaganda and the media were not the cause of revolution but became its driving force. In this protest, TikTok and Instagram plays a huge role in mass support with Iranian women from all over the world. Today the people of Iran and international community are trying to understand how to interpret the statements of the Iranian prosecutor general who announces the dissolutions of the wise policy including monitoring the wearing of hijabs and the implementation of laws on modesty and clothing. The fact that the government has decided to disband the wise police doesn't mean that the protests are ending. Even if the government says the hijab is a personal choice of everyone, it's not enough. People know that Iran has no future with this government in power. We will see even more people from different strata of Iranian society, moderate and traditional, who speak out in support of women and try to regain more of their rights. The protesters no longer care about the hijab. They have been going out without it for the last 70 days. What is happening with them is a revolution. The hijab was its beginning, and we, like the people of Iran, want nothing less than the days of dictator and regime change.